The objectivist ethics holds man's life as the standard of value, and his own life as the ethical purpose of every individual man. The difference between standard and purpose in this context is as follows. A standard is an abstract principle that serves as a measurement or gauge to guide a man's choices in the achievement of a concrete, specific purpose. That which is required for the survival of man qua man is an abstract principle that applies to every individual man. The task of applying this principle to a concrete, specific purpose, the purpose of living a life proper to a rational being, belongs to every individual man, and the life he has to live is his own. Man must choose his actions, values, and goals by the standard of that which is proper to man, in order to achieve, maintain, fulfill, and enjoy that ultimate value, that end in itself, which is his own life. Value is that which one acts to gain and or keep. Virtue is the act by which one gains and or keeps it. The three cardinal values of the objectivist ethics, the three values which, together, are the means to and the realization of one's ultimate value, one's own life, are reason, purpose, self-esteem, with their three corresponding virtues, rationality, productiveness, pride. Productive work is the central purpose of a rational man's life, the central value that integrates and determines the hierarchy of all his other values. Reason is the source, the precondition of his productive work. Pride is the result. Rationality is man's basic virtue, the source of all his other virtues. Man's basic vice, the source of all his evils, is the act of unfocusing his mind, the suspension of his consciousness, which is not blindness, but the refusal to see, not ignorance, but the refusal to know. Irrationality is a rejection of man's means of survival and, therefore, a commitment to a course of blind destruction. That which is anti-mind is anti-life. The virtue of rationality means the recognition and acceptance of reason as one's only source of knowledge, one's only judge of values, and one's only guide to action. It means one's total commitment to a state of full conscious awareness— to the maintenance of a full mental focus in all issues, in all choices, in all of one's waking hours. It means a commitment to the fullest perception of reality within one's power and to the constant active expansion of one's perception, i.e., of one's knowledge. It means a commitment to the reality of one's own existence, i.e., to the principle that all of one's goals, values, and actions take place in reality, and, therefore, that one must never place any value or consideration whatsoever above one's perception of reality. It means a commitment to the principle that all of one's convictions, values, goals, desires, and actions must be based on, derived from, chosen, and validated by a process of thought as precise and scrupulous a process of thought, directed by as ruthlessly strict an application of logic as one's fullest capacity permits. It means one's acceptance of the responsibility of forming one's own judgments and of living by the work of one's own mind, which is the virtue of independence. It means that one must never sacrifice one's convictions to the opinions or wishes of others, which is the virtue of integrity that one must never attempt to fake reality in any manner, which is the virtue of honesty, that one must never seek or grant the unearned and undeserved, neither in matter nor in spirit, which is the virtue of justice. It means that one must never desire effects without causes, and that one must never enact a cause without assuming full responsibility for its effects, that one must never act like a zombie, i.e., without knowing one's own purposes and motives, that one must never make any decisions, form any convictions, or seek any values out of context, i.e., apart from or against the total integrated sum of one's knowledge, and, above all, that one must never seek to get away with contradictions. 
It means the rejection of any form of mysticism, i.e., any claim to some nonsensory, non-rational, non-definable, supernatural source of knowledge. It means a commitment to reason, not in sporadic fits or on selected issues or in special emergencies, but as a permanent way of life. The virtue of productiveness is the recognition of the fact that productive work is the process by which man's mind sustains his life, the process that sets man free of the necessity to adjust himself to his background, as all animals do, and gives him the power to adjust his background to himself. Productive work is the road of man's unlimited achievement and calls upon the highest attributes of his character, his creative ability, his ambitiousness, his self-assertiveness, his refusal to bear uncontested disasters, his dedication to the goal of reshaping the earth in the image of his values. Productive work does not mean the unfocused performance of the motions of some job. It means the consciously chosen pursuit of a productive career in any line of rational endeavor, great or modest, on any level of ability. It is not the degree of a man's ability nor the scale of his work that is ethically relevant here, but the fullest and most purposeful use of his mind. The virtue of pride is a recognition of the fact, quote, that as man must produce the physical values he needs to sustain his life, so he must acquire the values of character to make his life worth sustaining, that as man is a being of self-made wealth, so he is a being of self-made soul, close quotes. Atlas shrugged. The virtue of pride can best be described by the term moral ambitiousness. It means that one must earn the right to hold oneself as one's own highest value by achieving one's own moral perfection, which one achieves by never accepting any code of irrational virtues impossible to practice, and by never failing to practice the virtues one knows to be rational, by never accepting an unearned guilt and never earning any, or, if one has earned it, never leaving it uncorrected by never resigning oneself passively to any flaws in one's character, by never placing any concern, wish, fear, or mood of the moment above the reality of one's own self-esteem. And, above all, it means one's rejection of the role of a sacrificial animal, the rejection of any doctrine that preaches self-immolation as a moral virtue or duty. The basic social principle of the objectivist ethics is that just as life is an end in itself, so every living human being is an end in himself, not the means to the ends or the welfare of others, and therefore that man must live for his own sake, neither sacrificing himself to others nor sacrificing others to himself.